Hello everybody, we are on day 27 of our at home full body workouts. So we'll just let some, uh, wait for some people to come online and we'll let the numbers build and then we'll um, get into our session. Hey Karen, hey Margaret, hey Lisa, hey Karen, Ella. Karen, Ella, she's English, so Ella means other, so other Karen. Um, hey teens, Nick, hey Nick. Sheila Wright, Margaret Breen, hey guys. So we'll just let a couple more people come online and then we'll get into it. So this is day 27. Um, what number day is it for you out of the workout? So how many out of these 27 have you managed to do and um, work with me on? So we're in our sixth week, sixth week of our um, at home workout. So today all you need is a weight or kettlebell, hopefully something you can hand in a single hand and a chair or stool. Okay, so that's all you need. Today is all about muscular endurance. So it's gonna be prolonged sets with continuous reps and continuous movements. Susie Flood, how are you? Trish Flood, 24 sessions, well done. Mackers, 21, well done. Looking good, that's it guys, nice to hear that. Okay, anyone, can anyone be 24? Anyone be 24 sessions? So if we got anyone who's done more than 24, let me know. Um, we've had some serious uh, commitment, that's great guys. Hey Finn, how's it going? <clears throat> okay, so, we're just another 10 or 15 seconds, the numbers are just building nicely there. Um, ooh, Aoife, 27 sessions, well done. Nin the pin, 25 sessions. Susie Flood, only 18, no way. Nadine, 27, well done guys. Teens, 22. Maurice, number 20. Excellent, 27 for Karen, just saying. <laughs> Cool, okay, none of that, Karen. Okay, so give yourselves a little bit of space, guys. That's great to hear that we've got such commitment. That's fantastic. That gives me a shot in the arm. Okay, so we're gonna do a lot of endurance today. So we're gonna have to work on our hamstrings and our lower back and our glutes. You wanna warm them up, so I want you to go down into a squat and hook your fingers under your toes and push your knees out with your elbows and hold it there for three, two, one, and then raise your hips as high as you can, stretching out that lower back for three, two, one, and then back down into a squat. So of all 27 sessions that you've done, guys, been live or have you caught up over the 24 hour period? So every three seconds we're raising the hips and lowering the hips. That's absolutely fantastic to hear that we've got some 27ers, 24ers, 26ers. Well done. Okay, every three seconds we're transitioning from a squat into a hip raise. So as I raise, you're gonna raise, or vice versa, or whatever, don't worry, every three seconds, roughly there, thereabouts. And at the top, try and shift your weight from left leg to right leg slightly, just to exaggerate the hips and exaggerate the hamstring stretch. Three, two, one, and keep that going. Because by the end of today, we're gonna to have a lot of kettlebell swings done. Yeah, kettlebell swings, they're essentially your rests today. Okay. Stuff and keep raising those hips nice and slow. Take your time staying with this exercise, stretching out the lower back, stretching out those glutes. So, in a couple more seconds, we're going to go on to our back and we're going to go into bridging to activate those glutes, get those hamstrings working. Okay, so now onto your back, knees bent, feet on the floor, drive the hips up into the sky, nice and slow. What we're looking to do is activate the hamstrings and the butt. So, at the top, your bum should be tight. Hamstrings should be starting to get warm because we're repping out the um, exercise, pushing from the heels. We don't want to curl the toes up, we just don't want to load bear through the toes. Okay, so let's get one leg in the air. So today, just resign yourself to the fact, change legs, that you're going to be doing a lot of kettlebell work. Everything we do today, or dumbbell, or barbell, which, or sorry, a bag of books, whatever, I refer to your single-handed weight as a kettlebell, but again, you guys can change. Back to two legs. So, <clears throat> everything we do today is gonna to involve that weight. Whether it's a four kilo, six kilo, eight kilo, 12, 16, whatever it is, you are gonna be using a weight to the best of your ability on all the exercises. In the way that we have body weight Friday, let's have kettlebell Tuesday. We'll wait till Tuesday. Okay, up we come. You're gonna go into a lunge, and you're gonna drop your two hands down beside your in, the instep of your foot, and then we're gonna try and get the elbow that's closest to that foot down as close to that heel as possible, and then come up and twist the torso around, and then back down. 
elbow as close to that heel as possible and then up and twist around and then back down again dropping that elbow as low as possible relaxing through the shoulder blades and then twisting so we're trying to get as much of an independent rotation on the upper body as possible combined with a groin hamstring and hip flexor stretch so you're twisting over the front knee okay and change legs so it's a big stretch two hands are down beside the instep we're getting the hip flexor when the two hands are on the floor then you're dropping the elbow down to exaggerate the hamstring on the front leg and then twisting up and around over the front leg and back down anybody know what topped Hadaway in the charts we were talking about yesterday in 1993 still haven't managed to figure out that one oh there's a few clicks on my back that's normal that's just the ligaments re oh, stretching and clicking back into place oh, releasing okay we're gonna go for one more elbow down as low as you can and then up and rotate and then slowly come up out of that exercise okay so like i was saying everything you do you're going to be using a weight what's going to happen is we're going to pick an exercise we're going to work on it for three minutes three minutes solid so the first exercise we're going to do is step up so we're going to have our weight we're going to step up on the chair you can change feet anytime you want you can stick with one leg for half the duration whatever as long as we have three minutes of it done under our belt if you need to take a breather take a breather but make sure that that breather is as slow and as small or sorry as quick and as small as possible after the three minutes my beeper is going to sound at that point we go straight into two minutes of kettlebell swings when we come out of the kettlebell swings we're into a new exercise for three minutes simple as that you just follow me we're going to go for three minutes so we are starting kettlebell step ups weighted step ups in eight seven six five four three two one let's go so i'm driving that bench or that chair or that stool down with the whole surface area of my foot i'm trying to isolate the leg that's on the chair i'm not trying to push myself up off the floor and i'm trying to avoid any overhang of my heel on off the, the chair if the foot is overhanging then i'm not going to be able to push from that part that's overhanging and if I'm trying to use the whole surface area of that foot, I'm not gonna be able to, because obviously I've got an overhang. So start thinking about your foot placement. We're already 30 seconds in, only two and a half more minutes to go. So again, what we're trying to isolate here, if your right foot is up on the chair, you're trying to isolate your right quad, right hamstring, and right glute. With every rep. We're not letting the knee collapse to the left and the right. We're keeping that knee on a, on a line with your ankle and your hip. So draw a line between your ankle and your hip and you are getting to keep the knee on that line. We are already one minute in. Whew. It's already starting to take its toll, especially after yesterday. In 15 seconds, you're gonna hit the halfway mark and I'm gonna change sides. But again, if you've been alternating, it's up to you. My shoulder's starting to burn whew, along with my quad. And I'm on the halfway mark, so I'm gonna switch. I'm gonna keep it as short as possible, and I'm off again. And again, I'm drawing a line between my ankle and my hip, and I'm making sure my knee stays on that line. It doesn't collapse in, or it doesn't push too far out. And once I got my technique, and I can maintain that technique, then I start to ramp up my reps. But at any point, if my technique starts to fail while I'm ramping up the tempo and I pair back the tempo and I emphasize technique once more one minute and then you're going into kettlebell swings if you have water with you today just say goodbye to it you're not going to see that water for 40 minutes you're not going to die of thirst you're not going to die of dehydration you might die but that's not because of dehydration it's because of kettlebell swings 37 seconds and then you're going to go straight into your kettlebell swings and again with everything we do with our kettlebell swing and our step ups we're going to push the floor aggressively away with the whole sole of the foot we're not looking to just isolate the heel or the ball of the foot the whole foot pushes into the floor Whew. we got 15 seconds and then we're into two minutes of swings 
After we come out of swings, we're gonna go into a rear elevated split squat. And that's using this chair again. Five seconds, four, three, two, one. Into your swings, let's go. Shoulders back, chest out, head up. So remember, go through your points. Pushing the whole floor down with the surface area of the sole of your feet. Your shoulder blades are pinned back together like you're holding a tennis ball between them at all times. And you're aggressively and explosively pushing the floor down, which allows you to stand up tall, and therefore the kettlebell goes out in front. And at a, for a very brief period of that swing, that kettlebell should feel weightless. At the top, I always loosen my grip just enough to prove to myself that my kettlebell is weightless. Whew. Shoulders back, chest out, head up. Whew. Control your breathing. Think of this <laughs> in a sadistic way as your rest period. Whew. So we've got 60 seconds left, and then after 60 seconds, you're gonna take the uh, chair, you're gonna put your back foot up on it, and we're gonna go into split squat. So that means dropping our knee right down towards the floor while maintaining a perfect upper body. <sighs> like you got a full glass of water on your head. So those kettlebell swings, I'm really starting to feel them on my middle back, in between my shoulder blades and just below, because I'm really focusing on my posture. But also, after yesterday's workout, yesterday's workout, there was a good bit there on the middle back as well, especially with our step ups. <sighs> 12 seconds. We got 10 more seconds, and then we're getting into our three minutes of rear elevated split squat. Four, three, two, one. Get your chair, get your back foot up on the chair, and drop that knee right down. Now you have the luxury of time for the next exercise, which is rear split squat. So take your time. Use that time to really focus on the movement, on the sole of the foot, remaining in contact with the floor, of the shoulders back, of the chest out, of the head up. Keeping the posture, really hammering the posture today. 30 seconds in already. Whew. So, I'm gonna keep going on this until we hit the one minute mark. And then, I'm gonna do a minute on the other side. And then it's gonna be 30 and 30 to finish it off. Whew. So if you wanna stay with me, go for it. Otherwise, I will give you the halfway mark. Whew. Okay, it's one minute in, I'm changing. It's up to you. Again, you can decide when you want to change. You can change every three or four reps if you want. Whew. But you can tell by my breathing as I'm talking, that heart rate is already elevated. And an elevated heart rate whew, means calories. And calories equals body fat. Whew. And I'm bracing my core whew, to ensure my posture stays correct as I drop myself down into my split squat. Whew. And I'm really concentrating on my technique because in 20 seconds, I'm into my last minute. Whew. And I gotta concentrate for 30 and 30. The more tired I become, the more the body wants to take a breather. 10 more seconds and I'm changing. Whew. Five seconds. And I'm changing again, 30 and 30. Again, as with everything, I'm trying to keep that change, that transition to a minimum. Whew. So my stomach really needs to have to squeeze because that middle back on me right now is tight and it's really making itself known. Whew. Whew. Seven seconds and then I'm gonna change to the other side again. Three, two, one, quick change. Last 30 seconds of the round. After this, we're going back into our kettlebell swings. So today, as of yesterday, is all about endurance. And you will see how effective 
this workout is without going at crazy speeds. Five seconds, four, three, two, one. Kettlebell swings, let's go. So it's at this point that if your body was taking any shortcuts, well, it's gonna start to show up. So now you gotta really focus on exaggerating your technique and more importantly, your posture. You gotta get your big muscles driving. Let the big muscles do the work. Whew. Keep the posture, keep the shoulder blades pinned. I'm really finding these swings tough on my middle back. So my middle back wants to take a rest and it's giving me a good bit of tightness. But it's not a bad tightness, it's just a holy crap, give me a rest tightness. But I'm in charge of it. One of the one things I'm in charge of. Very few. And I'm gonna have to keep going. What else am I in charge of, Nick? That's it. That's it. It's the only thing I'm in charge of is the posture. Nick's got everything. Oh yeah, the motorway. Nick's got everything else. Oh, we have 50 seconds worth of swings. And then we're gonna work on, wait for it, kettlebell thrusters. Yeah! It's so really gonna work on the lower body portion Woo! of the kettlebells. Tough session, not for the faint hearted today. Woo! 30 seconds. Woo. And then, if you need to take a breather, take a breather. If you need to get rid of the weight for a few seconds, get rid of the weight. Woo. But stay honest, really focus on keeping yourself taking over. Oh, you're gonna be very aware of your posterior after this. That's basically ending on your back. Three, two, one. Weight up onto the chest, push your hips back, sit into a squat and press. So we have three minutes of thrusters and it's not at crazy speed. It's at controlled, continuous pace with perfection on the posture and on the technique. Because right now, your body is really struggling to keep those muscles fed. It's 30 seconds in, I'm changing, I'm going. Remember with your squat, first step, push ass back. Second step, sit ass down. Third step, drive knees out to the side. Do not let your knees collapse in at the bottom of your squat. Keep the knees pushed out to the side. We're coming up to the minute mark. At the minute mark, I'm gonna change sides again and change. So, use your breathing as a cue. In, hold, up, out. In, hold, up, out. Ooh, it's hard to describe that when I'm trying to hold my breath. 15 seconds, and then I'm changing back to the left side. We in a crack today, huh? Okay, that's the halfway marked, and I'm going again on the other side. Again, you can switch anytime you want. The only goal is to keep going with a perfect posture and the perfect movement pattern. I got 10 more seconds and then I'm going to switch to my right side. One more time each side. Switch, one minute. And as with every squat, you always start a squat by sticking your ass out. Once your ass is out, it has all that room behind it to drop. If you don't stick your ass out, and then you try and drop, your knees get pushed forward and your weight goes into the ball of your feet. And therefore the knees take the pressure as opposed to the quads, glutes and hands. Oh. And switch last time, 30 seconds. Oh. Oh. And all of a sudden you'll realize how heavy that weight has become. Oh. We're 18 seconds away from our third round of swings. 
10 seconds. Seven, five, three, time for one more rep. Ah, and swing, let's go. So, we have two minutes worth of swings, and again, no matter how fancy you get with the weight transfer from hand to hand, the foundation remains the same. The feet push uniformly into the floor, the hips aggressively stand tall, and the shoulder blades remain pinned back. So, we're 30 seconds in, we got 90 to go, and then after this, we're going into a single arm row. So you're gonna go back to your chair, you're gonna put one hand on the chair, you're gonna support yourself with the two feet and the one hand, so you've got three points, tripod, stance, and then that one arm that's free on the weight is gonna squeeze the lat and draw that weight up to your armpit. So one minute to go. So what I would say is on the single arm row, play around with the angle of the elbow in relation to your ribs. So I have it at 45 degrees. Um, keep the hand moving, or keep the arm moving, and keep the pressure on the lat. So every 30 seconds, I'm gonna change sides between left and right. Whew. Pushing the floor down, straight legs at the top of my swing. Whew. Shoulder blades pinned back. Oh yeah, yeah. Nice tough one today, eh? 15 seconds. Oh, good things happen in numbers of tw 27, right? Oh, six seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. We're back to our chair. Let's go. Three points in contact with the surface as we row. And again, we're not giving the core a break. We gotta keep squeezing that stomach in order to maintain a parallel posture with the floor. So again, everything we have done over the last 20 days, change hands, that's 30 seconds. Everything we have done over the last 27 work, 26 workouts, 27 workouts, is fully and wholly scalable according to your abilities. So the way in which you scale something, down or up, so for example, if you want to scale this exercise down, you either lighten the load or reduce the amount of reps. If you need to take a breather after a certain amount of time or reps, take that breather. Change hands, one minute in. If you need to take a little bit longer of a breather, take it. If you need to change the movement by supporting yourself with one hand on the surface, do it. But again, no matter what version you do of the exercise, you will always focus on the correct muscles and the actual movement pattern itself. And once you have those down, everything we do is scalable. Unfortunately, the drawback, change hands halfway. Unfortunately, the drawback about following a session online like this is there isn't much feedback from a trainer. So you gotta listen to the verbal cues and you gotta take them on board and apply them as if a trainer was standing beside you and adjusting. So why do you hear me talking through how I'm standing? I'm helping you get yourself set up in your own posture with your own technique. Change hands, one minute to go. So again, I got two feet in one hand, equally load bearing. My knees are soft, my hips are pushed out the back and my upper body is parallel with the floor. Before I pull that, down, that weight into my armpit, I'm squeezing my stomach and I'm engaging my lat. That means I'm visualizing that big muscle on the right side of my body because I'm using my right arm, squeezing and pulling my shoulder and therefore my arm back. Okay, in the last 30 seconds, change. So we're going into swings next. So remember, as we get tired, that body starts to look for shortcuts. Do not let it look for shortcuts. You have to be the hard-nosed trainer, as well as the hard-nosed client. 10 seconds, we're going into swings. Seven, keep the rest to an absolute minimum. Four, 
three, two, one, and swing. Woo! Sweat is dropping off the end of my nose now at this stage. And again, with your swing, don't be afraid to bend your knees a little bit and stick your butt out the back. Don't rely on the lower back. We're not using the lower back. We're using the feet driving into the floor, the hips and knees fully locking out aggressively, and then the shoulder blades staying back. The lower back isn't taking much moving, or isn't taking much lifting in this roll. It's the glutes, the bum cheeks, snapping forward and bringing you back to an upright position. Well done. Keep her going. Let me just check my notes there. Oh yeah. So, next exercise we're going into, in one minute and six seconds time, is you're gonna be on your back. You're gonna put your feet on the floor, knees bent, and we're gonna sit up and raise that kettlebell of that weight to the sky. So it's a sky reacher with one hand or two holding the weight. If you need to do it without the weight, do it without the weight. Like I said, everything is scalable. So if you're struggling with the weight, ditch the weight. Focus on perfect posture. Woo! So, last 30 seconds of these swings, and then you're onto your back for sky reachers. And again, do not let the body take shortcuts. And the first place the body is gonna try and take shortcuts on a swing is by rounding the back and letting the shoulder blades open. Don't let the shoulder blades open. 10 seconds, keep the stomach tight and aggression when you stand up. Get angry, Arr, show me your angry face. Three, two, one. On your back, sitting right up, punching to the sky. If you need to use a hand or an arm on the floor to help, that's fine. But the emphasis here is keeping that weight directly above your body with an emphasis on getting a squeeze on the stomach. If you are not getting enough of a squeeze on the stomach or you can't sit up, just raise your shoulder blades enough till you get that squeeze. That's halfway, I'm gonna change, but safety first. I'm not gonna change directly above my face because that's just silly. I'm just gonna change with the bell beyond my head. So if it dropped, it would land on the floor whew, beyond my head. Oh, excellent work, 12 seconds. And then I'm gonna safety change again to the other side. So remember, focus here is your core. That's your primary focus. And I'm changing hands without dropping the bell on my head because it's out of the way. Woo. So I'm trying not to swing the weight. I'm trying to keep that weight as steady as possible. I would use my hand on the floor to help myself up in order to avoid swinging the weight. If you swing the weight, the weight is just gonna lift you up, as opposed to you pushing it up using your stomach muscles. So in six seconds, we're coming onto the halfway mark, and at that point, I'm gonna change safely again, and I'm changing again, and I'm off. Oh, my arm is starting to burn. My stomach is really struggling to stay honest. So I'm giving myself every opportunity possible to keep isolating my stomach muscles. Oh, 10 more seconds, then I'm changing oh, for the second last time. Keep going, five seconds, four, three, two, and I'm changing again. It's your last 60 seconds. Stay with it, guys. Remember, we only do every exercise once apart from the swings. So you've got a three minute window to get as many reps as possible, or reps as possible. Reps, oh, chicken wrap. Oh. Oh, here we go, 10 more seconds, and then I'm gonna change for the last time. Oh. Oh. Three, two, one, safely change out of the way of the head, and sit up. Keep moving. The key is keep moving, right technique. Who's that, Nick Campbell, K-M-R-T. Keep moving, right technique. There's no mention there about speed, it's just about keep moving. So once you've got the right technique, just keep moving. You can't get it wrong, whether it's at 100 pounds an hour or two, four, 
three swings in two, one, up we get into swings. Let's go. Whew. So by now, your core muscles are tired, but they are active. So we're gonna capitalize on the stomach muscles being tight. And hopefully, if done right, that should take some pressure off the middle back. Whew. It's that tension I was talking about at the start that I was getting on my middle back. That started to ease off now because the body has sent all the blood in. We've helped remove lactic acid. We've helped remove carbon dioxide. The muscles have been mobilized and we are back to business with very little tension there. But that will show its head later on this evening when I'm sitting down and relaxing. Those muscles are definitely gonna be dommed. It's so hard to get a full range of pull exercises to build and maintain the back. So it's kind of a nice little shot in the arm when you get doms on your back after a workout like this. Because you've got limited equipment. Everything you can do for the front and above the head is push, and you can push stuff much easier than you can pull stuff. So it's harder to pull stuff in a wide range of movements. So we've got 35 seconds, and then we're going into sumo deadlift, high pull. And the key with the sumo deadlift is a nice wide stance, and the knees stay out wide, as wide as the feet. Don't be lazy and let your knees fall in. Stay on it and keep the knees pushed out. So we've got 12 more seconds. Use that to perfect your kettlebell swing. Six seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Feet nice and wide. Sit my butt down, drive, pull. Down, change hands, drive, pull. If I want to, I can use two hands. So, I'm gonna go for 60 seconds alternating, and then I'm gonna go 60 seconds. Oh, sorry, then I'm gonna go 30 seconds right side, 30 seconds left side, and then I'm gonna go back to 60 seconds alternating. So we wanna sit our bum right down, low. I don't want you to tip forward, I want you to stay as upright as possible. So at the start of every rep, you're really hammering in the depth of the hips, the knees getting pushed out to the side, and you're generating that power. Five seconds, and I'm gonna go right side entirely, although you can keep going. I'm gonna go right side entirely now. So what I'm looking to do, just like my kettlebell swing, I'm looking to generate as much power with my big muscles. That's my quads, my glutes, my hams. Then I am with my shoulder and my trap and my forearm. Those guys are tiny compared to the muscles on my lower body. In four seconds, I'm gonna change to the left. Three, two, one. Change left, drive and pull. Well, it's more like drive the legs and steer. And remember, if you break the elbow early, you lose the power. So do not break the elbow until the legs and hips are fully locked out. And then if you get that combo right of locking out the legs and hips before you pull with the arm, that weight should feel slightly light oh, for a split second and allow you to steer the direction. Okay, we're back to alternates for 60 seconds. Whew. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to expel as much energy with my leg and hip extension as possible. And that energy, therefore, is gonna transfer into the kettlebell. The kettlebell then has its own kinetic energy and is able to travel autonomously for just a dur small duration. But it's at that point, I then steer where I want it to go with my arm. Oh, that heart rate is crazy high. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, touching 450 cals already. Oh, 15 seconds, and then we're into swings. Oh, 10 seconds, nine, eight, seven, six, five, 
core swings in three two one let's swing Whew. shoulders back chest out head up aggression on the hip and knee extension so we're really focusing now on the posture between the shoulder blades because it's now when that posture starts to go to pot so that kettlebell if done right the technique is done right that kettlebell should be weightless just like your sumo deadlift type pull and it's that very split second of weightlessness at the top where the legs and hips are fully locked out that you actually get a little bit of a breather and when you add all those little breathers together they result in more longevity in your routine than having to sprint rest sprint rest it's like you're recovering on the go so you've got to really focus on your technique posture and movement patterns you're inside one minute to go and then the next exercise we're going into is Russian twists. Now, this is where you get the choice of either using the kettlebell or not using the kettlebell. But regardless of whether you use the kettlebell or not, I don't want to see any ankles crossed and I don't want to see any feet off the floor. I want to see heels on the floor very lightly. 30 seconds. So I want you to imagine the floor is made out of eggshells. Your heels are going to contact the floor without breaking those eggshells at all times. Whew. And your ankles are not locked. Your ankles are unlocked. Ten more seconds. Hello, glutes. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Down. Step one, sit. Step two, unlock ankles. Step three, lean back, remain in contact with the heels, twist over, twist back. Very lightly, keep contact with your heels. At that point, you are leaning back, keeping the stomach tight, and then you are twisting using your weight. So it's 30 seconds in already. After 30 seconds, I'm gonna ditch the weight, and I'm gonna go for 60 seconds unweighted. And then for the last 60 seconds, we're back to weighted again. And there is no difference, posture-wise, between weighted and unweighted. Slow, controlled, continuous movement. Slow as pro. Okay, so I'm going to ditch the weight. I'm going to sit myself up. Heels very lightly on the floor. Lean back, stomach tight. Heels remain in contact very lightly with the floor. Rotating torso. All the way around, all the way back. Woo! So I got 45 more seconds, and then we are into another 60 seconds of weighted. You might find your tempo increases the more you go with the, out the weight, that's fine. As long as you keep an eye on technique. So, if you can take a little breather every few seconds, take a breather but be harsh on yourself and lean back and get straight back into it again. And I'm trying to turn my torso all the way around. And my stomach muscles are absolutely on fire right now. Oh, I got 12 more seconds and then I'm gonna pick up that weight again. Seven seconds, six, five, four, three, two, one. I'm back to the weight. You got 60 seconds left in the Russian twists. So every four or five reps, I'm just gonna put it down. I'm gonna take a couple of seconds. I'm gonna reset, and I'm gonna reset my posture. Take a very quick breather, and I'm gonna go back into it again, because it just allows me to stay honest with my technique, and doesn't let any kind of shortcuts come into play. 30 seconds to go, and then we're into our second last round of swings. Oh, and again, my heels are very lightly contacting that floor made out of eggshells. Oh, oh, 12 seconds, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 
four, three, two, one. Up, kettlebell swings. Let's go. Jesus is gonna help you now. <laughs> so, next exercise we're going into is, excuse me, I just catch my breath. <laughs> next exercise we're going into is gonna be a windmill. That's gonna be a standing windmill. And the whole idea behind the windmill is keeping the emphasis on the core and the shoulders. So you only go as low in a windmill as your technique will allow. So you'll see me getting all the way down to the laces on my runners. I don't expect everybody to get down that far. Just get your hand as low as you can while maintaining that weight. So a windmill is you're gonna have your arm fully extended above your head. Your feet are gonna be nice and wide. So your right arm is above your head. You are running your left hand down your left leg to touch your left shoe. At all times, that weight remains above your head. Oh, almost like you got a tray with a full glass of water on it and you don't want to spill it. That Bruno Mars video looks like he's in Eddie Rockets. Five guys, I think, no? oh, Five guys, is that okay? Sorry, just got some MTV on in the background. Whatever distracts her from my talking. Oh, 30 seconds to go, and then we're into our last exercise of windmill and then our last set of swings and you're gonna wake up screaming swings tonight oh. hey no burpees right no donkey kicks oh. no high plank knee to elbow jumps seven seconds six five four three if you're new to the windmill listen to my instructions as I go through them Fully extend the bell above your head. If you can't hold the bell locked out, do not hold the weight, go unweighted. Put your hand on your left thigh, turn to look at the weight, run your hand down, tip your runner or as close to as possible, come back up and twist. So I'm gonna twist to my right, so I'm underneath the weight, keeping an eye on it, running my hand down my leg, which is massively sweaty at this point, and then twisting and coming back up. And in five seconds, I'm gonna change to my left side, three, two, one, changing to my left, turning to my left, getting under that weight and coming back up. So imagine that weight is a glass of water. You don't want to spill it. If you find it's starting to tip forward, then you stop going down. You only go as far as you can without that arm tipping forward. And you've got to keep an eye on it at all times. It's going to be sneaky. Three, two, one, Changing sides, and I'm off. If you're new to this, it will take a while to get used to the technique. Again, scaling it is reducing the depth at which you push your hand down, and then reducing the weight or removing the weight. But the aim is to hold that glass of water above your head without spilling it. Seven seconds, then it's the halfway mark, and we're gonna change again. Two, one. Change sides, bell up, twist, drop. So if you have managed to do every exercise with me today, as I have prescribed, that's called Orex. fair play, because this is a tough muscular endurance session. Oh, so we are getting the muscles to work continuously under resistance and endure that for three and two minute sets. Oh, and change sides. 60 seconds left. So by doing muscular endurance, basically it's like running with a weighted vest on. You're continuously asking your body to work at a regular pace without any rest for a long period of time against an external resistance other than your body weight. So your body is used to carrying yourself around and can do that exercise continuously. But if you start introducing foreign weight to add increased weight to your body, you are gonna really struggle because the muscles are only conditioned really to lift you for a prolonged period. That's why you don't see big bulky marathon runners. The body strips itself right down to what it barely needs in order to continuously work at the most effective manner possible. Stick a weight vest on them, they're working harder. 
Oh, that's muscular endurance, cardio endurance. Five seconds, we're going into our last set of swings. Two minutes to the finish line. Two, one, swings. Let's go. So, keep moving, guys. You have two minutes worth of swings. Whew. Ignore my timer. It's having a little bit of a fit, but it's all right. I'll be able to keep an eye on, keep going. So, we're already 10 seconds in. Whew. We got a minute, and now 45 seconds to go. Whew. So in a minute and 45 seconds, you are done. And you're gonna be done with the perfect kettlebell swing. The exact same way your perfect kettlebell swing started today. So our feet are pushing uniformly into the floor. We're extending our hips and knees aggressively into the floor so we can come upright. And then that bell is therefore transferred via kinetic energy out in front. We try not to bend our elbow because if you bend your elbow, you end up working your forearm and bicep, and then you end up slightly tendonitis. You don't want that. You want to dump as much energy using the lower body as possible till that kettlebell, as you can see, is weightless. Don't try that at home, especially if your wife is looking at you and she doesn't want you to break the floorboards with a kettlebell. So we have 45 seconds. Whew. And we are into our cool down. So remember, at the top of your swing, your legs and hips have locked out, your bum cheeks are tight, your stomach is tight, your shoulder blades are tight. Tight. We have 35 seconds. Keep the posture. Push the feet down aggressively. Remember, imagine you were standing in sand. If you were to step out of those two footprints, there shouldn't be a dep depression more at the back or the front. It should be a uniform depression. Depression, that's something these endorphins are gonna battle. Oh. Remember, you're doing this to flatten the curve, guys. We're almost at the other side, but we can definitely see light at the end of the tunnel. We just keep pushing through. 10 seconds, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Last three seconds of the workout. Two, one, rest. You guys are now done on Tuesday. Day 27. So take a couple of seconds, let that heart rate come down. Whew. And we are going to take a breather before we get into our cool down. Ooh, 515 to 608 calories. Heart rate's at a consistent 135. That's not bad. So control of breathing in through nose, out through mouth. Okay, so regardless of how many swings we did after the first round, we really hit those hamstrings tough yeah too right we really hit those hamstrings and glutes in the lower back so we want to stretch them out so i want you to spread your feet as wide as you can soften your knees push your hips back and drop the backs of your hands to the floor and we're just going to hang around down here for 30 seconds so control your breathing in through nose out through mouth oh let me know how you got on today guys send us a message Stick a uh, story up on uh, Instagram, tag us. Tough, not tough, easy, medium, hard. You wouldn't be able, those kind of messages. And then we'll be able to judge from the, uh, the feedback. Seven more seconds, then we're gonna go into a lunge and we're gonna drop our left knee onto the floor and put our right foot out in front. Two, one. So we're gonna lunge and we're gonna raise our hands above or behind our head and just let our hip, our left hip sink forward. I'm just gonna relax into this stretch. In through nose, exhale out the mouth, relax the shoulder blades, and the emphasis of my stretch here is on my hip flexor. So essentially just below my belt line, into the top of my, top of my thigh, and then down into my quad. Whew. How are we feeling? Wrecked. Feeling wrecked. That was a sneaky one. Well, there was no sneaky about it, it was blatant. Let's call that a blatant one. <laughs> okay, and change. When someone says you got three minutes of step ups, Follow by two minutes of swings for basically 44, 40, 40 minutes. Um, you know it's not gonna be an easy one or a sneaky one. So if you can endure that session, you can pretty much endure any session. Whew. So control your breathing in through nose, out through mouth, emphasis on the hip flexor. After this, you're gonna go have a shower and then you're gonna go have something to eat because you gotta replenish the glycogen calories that you just expelled. Okay, standing tall. So I want you to interlock your fingers. You're gonna turn and you're gonna 
round your back, push your back out as much as possible, relax your shoulders, in through nose, out through mouth, I want you to visualize your shoulder blades actually opening out to the sides. 10 more seconds, nine more, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Drop your right hand down the back in between your shoulder blades, left on the elbow, pull to the left. Whew, tough, but great work. Uh, thanks, Ron. You're very work, uh, very welcome. Well, jeez, I can't even speak. What's wrong with me? Maybe I didn't have enough martini for breakfast. Oh, you're very welcome, Sharon. Bring back the burpees. <laughs> you're gonna be eating those words, then. Oh, change sides if you haven't already. In through nose, out through mouth. Okay, and guys, that is your Tuesday. So tomorrow I will see you same time midday for day 28 on our sixth week. Um, go and wash your head because it's sweaty as hell. See you later guys, see you tomorrow.